So in here, we've got a magnet that's generating a very large magnetic field. So we have to watch your camera, actually, because if you go too close to that magnet, then it's just going to wipe the tape. Why? <laughs> because because mag tapes, the, the tape in your camera is, is, works using magnetism. It's, the information is laid down in, in, uh, by changing the magnetization on the magnetic tape. So if we go too close to this magnet in here, it'll just erase all the uh, information on your tape, and we'll, you know, we'll have to start again. <laughs> so I want to talk about B, which is the symbol for magnetic field. Now, most people, when they think of magnets, think of something like this little fridge magnet here. What is that? Where so is that's, so that's a, <laughs> this has come off our fridge. So you can see Percy the Penguin there is he's sticking to that piece of uh, steel. And B is uh, the magnetic field. So this is what we call, this, this is the sort of the invisible lines of, of force that come out from this magnet. I can, I can just sort of briefly draw a, a diagram. So if I show this disc like that, it's uh, not the most artistic drawing in the world. With some arrows on like that. Now the spacing between those those lines. So this is this is what we call B. So well, it, as with many things, it depends what astronomer you ask. For example, if you ask an astronomer who studies the sun, they would tell you that magnetism is really very important. And in fact, if you look at some of those beautiful pictures of the sun, you can actually see the magnetic field of the sun. You can actually see the streamers of material being bent around by magnetic fields in the sun. So you can very sp explicitly see it. Are there, any more, are there any stronger magnets? What happens if we find a, a stronger magnet? And in fact, just over here, I've got a... These are some of the most powerful permanent magnets that um, anybody's ever made, actually, these, these type of magnets. And these are called neodymium magnets. I want, to, I want to keep these two magnets far enough apart because if I, if I get them too close, they attract... Oh, that's so strongly <laughs> that it almost takes your finger off. Um, in fact, the, the, they collide with such force that it actually starts to shatter the magnet. OK, so if you want to go much stronger than uh, one of these neodymium magnets, then you have to uh, use what's called an electromagnet. Now, an electromagnet is something that um, we can make just by uh, wrapping. This is, so this is a little bit of copper wire here. And I've made this electromagnet by wrapping the copper wire round and round and round this uh, steel screw here. If I, if I bring this uh, steel screw up to the paperclip, you can see there's no, it doesn't stick, there's no attraction to it. But now what I need to do is put some electric current. I need to apply an electric current to this coil, pass some electric current through the coil. Um, and I've, I've got a battery, a couple of batteries here, and I just, I'll just stick that terminal on there and that one on there. And then, there you go. So we generated a magnetic field. Yeah, so if you can imagine scaling this thing up, passing more current through it, getting uh, bigger turns, bigger wires, we can generate much, much larger magnetic fields. And it just so happens that I have one next door. So if you'd like to follow me, we can have a look at this beast next door. For the most part, astronomers try to ignore magnetic fields just because they tend to be rather complicated, very messy. Um, and because the things we can typically measure in astronomical objects are really rather simple, we can only get the rather crude quantities about, about objects from the things we can actually see, magnetic fields are just too complicated to really study in detail. So in here, we've got a magnet that's generating a very large magnetic field. So we have to watch your camera, actually, because if you go too close to that magnet, then it's just going to wipe the tape. What we've got here is, is um, some lines on the floor just marking out uh, the magnetic field strength. So um, round about here, we, we're approaching something like I don't know, 10 times the Earth's magnetic field. So it's kind of this classic thing in astronomy that uh, we have you know, research seminars where somebody will give a talk about something. If you're the person who's in charge of the seminar series, it's kind of expected that you'll come up with a question at the end of the seminar. Um, and quite often you're kind of struggling to think of something to ask if you, haven't, you, know, if you really haven't quite understood what the talk was about. So the classic thing to ask in a, at the end of a research seminar is, oh yes, but what about magnetic fields? Because almost certainly the person you're talking to won't actually have an answer because magnetic fields are, are very complicated, but you'll sound quite clever because magnetic fields almost certainly affect a lot of things going on in the universe, but just at a level that's too complicated to understand. So, so we actually, we have to take some precautions when we go in here. Um, that we don't take our keys in there or don't take the keys too close to the magnet. We have to make sure we don't carry our wallets in there because um, your 
credit card details are stored on magnetic stripes on your, on your uh, credit card. So if you go too close to the magnet with your credit card, it's wiped. And actually, that's happened to me once. And also, um, one key thing is uh, if you have any piercings as well. So this can get quite embarrassing. You know, if you've got um, you know, piercings in your mouth or in your ears or elsewhere, you know, this will be strongly attracted to the magnets. And if you get too close, it'll just rip it out of you. So I have to ask these questions, you know, do you have any metal in your body? So you, if you, you want to come this way, and if you want to follow this yellow and black line here, yeah. uh -huh. um, through into this part here. All right. So this is, the, this is this, the giant version of the electromagnet that I was showing you earlier. It's slightly different from the, it's not just a scaled up version of that electromagnet. It's what's called a um, superconducting magnet. So, actually, when I applied a, a, a current to that, elect that little mini electromagnet with the orange wire earlier on, when I apply a, a current, it gets a bit warm because the, the, the wire has some resistance to it. Um, and so, actually, if I leave that, mag that, that battery connected for more than a few seconds, it actually, the wire starts to get a bit hot. It's dissipating energy. Here we've got a superconducting magnet. So all the wires in it are superconducting. They're cooled down to 4 Kelvin, so minus uh, 269 degrees C. And at that temperature, the, the wires don't have any electrical resistance to it. So it means we can pass enormous currents through it without generating a lot of heat. In fact, it doesn't generate any heat when it's superconducting. So I can show you the size of the magnetic field around this uh, magnet. If I bring my keys, I don't want to get the keys too close, because if I get them too close, what happens if the keys stick to the magnet? So if I just, if I just bring them a little bit like that, you can see, see my keys there. You see that? It's being don't break my camera. No, no, Don't I'm bring it over this line. Really right. <laughs> this is my favourite bit. Are you showing this? Yeah. Well, what you're basically looking at there is a can. It's a double-walled container. And inside that container, um, we've, got this, we've got liquid helium at 4 Kelvin. And inside, inside this bath of liquid helium, we've got essentially one of these coils of wire. It's not an or, you know, orange-covered copper wire, but it's this you know, more and more expensive superconducting wire. And the, um, the magnet itself is about this sort of size, that sort of diameter. You can imagine that, that kind of thing. And we've got a, a hole that passes through the middle. And the whole thing is arranged so that um, the, the hole through the center of the magnet is at room temperature. So that the can has got a, like a hole through, punched through the center that you can use to do experiments inside the magnetic field, inside this very, very strong magnetic field at room temperature. So we don't have to do them at 4 Kelvin. Well, this magnet is primarily used to do uh, magnetic levitation studies. And what we can do with this magnet is we can perform experiments that would normally only be able to be done on the space station, for example, or on, uh, on these parabolic flights where they take um, jet airplanes up and uh, you know, do these uh, parabolic dive bombs so-called vomit comet flights. 